Welcome to this introductory video on PINK. My name is Patrick Lysat, and in this video, my colleagues and I will present an overview of PINK, the aims of the project, how it is architected around open source software, and how it is being received in the community. PINK is a free open source software framework that runs directly on Xilinx adaptive compute platforms. The PINK framework exploits higher levels of design abstraction and enables rapid prototyping for greater productivity. PINK's primary goals are to attract new users to adaptive computing and to increase the productivity of new and existing users. Let's begin by previewing some examples of where PINK accelerates innovation. In this application, a Fermilab team has created a new framework called QUIC. QUIC is built on RFSOC PINK and is a control kit that accelerates innovation in quantum computing and quantum instrumentation. Despite being new to programmable logic, a company called Spline AI used PINK with a DPU overlay to get their new COVID-19 detector to market more quickly. Our final example shows the first open source spectrum analyzer integrated with a regulator's database of allocated spectrum. This new tool uses RSOC PINK for better spectrum monitoring and regulation. When we started PINK, we recognized that data science, machine learning, and artificial intelligence are cross-cutting concerns that impact engineers and scientists from all disciplines. Typically, most data scientists are not familiar with embedded software or hardware design. In contrast, productivity languages and frameworks are very popular with data scientists. PINK recognizes that we will only attract new users by making adaptive computing accessible within the tools that these new customers already know. Fortunately, some of the most popular tools for data science are open source tools. Python and Jupyter are especially popular with data scientists and have large and growing communities. Python, of course, is famous for its ease of use and its huge ecosystem of third-party libraries. Project Jupyter introduced notebooks, which are executable web documents, so that now anyone can publish their work as Jupyter notebooks and other colleagues can immediately verify and reuse their results. Jupyter Lab is a cross-platform browser-based IDE that is accessible from any computer. Here we see a simplified representation of the JupyterPython software stack. This productivity stack is used daily by millions of users in different domains. A typical embedded software stack is dominated by C, C++ systems programming and operates at much lower levels of abstraction. The embedded programmer communities are also much smaller. In PINK, we port the Python and Jupyter productivity stack onto the embedded stack and run the tools natively on adaptive compute targets. To do this, PINK must first port a desktop-style Linux distribution on the adaptive computers. Running desktop Linux and the, PINK, the Python Jupyter stacks natively is not enough. PINK ensures that programmable logic is a first-class entity within the new framework. By porting the Python Jupyter open source productivity stack, PINK allows users to develop directly on the target with tools that they are familiar with from the desktop. Next, PINK unifies Python, Jupyter, and programmable logic so that hardware overlays have declarative APIs and behave more like software libraries. PINK also makes it easy to segue efficiently between Python and C, C++. Thanks, Patrick. My name is Graham Shelley, and let's take some time to see those contributions in action. Before we can interact with Xilinx platforms, we need to power on a development board. PINK has been ported to most of the Xilinx development boards across Zinc, Zinc UltraScale Plus, and RFSOC. We support Alveo and AWS F1 cloud-based boards as well. For an out-of-box experience, we wanted both a fast start and uniform experience across a variety of boards. Perhaps a simple idea, but we supported a variety of boards by open sourcing a build flow for SD cards that we can maintain for ourselves and community members across Zinc, Zinc Ultra Scale Plus, and RFSOX. And depending on the board, pink SD cards typically include multiple bit streams and tens of example notebooks. If this sounds like a Raspberry Pi out of box experience, well, that was our goal when pink was first invented. Now let's look at how pink leverages and extends Python. In particular, we'll look at how Xilinx technologies, from both the software and hardware perspective, map into Python using Pink as a bridge. With Pink, we have built a library of APIs common across Xilinx platforms. The Pink Overlay class is used to manage the programmable logic and can download bitstreams to configure the PL. In this example, we import the Pink Overlay class 
declare the object, and use it. Most things in Python can be simplified to this level. Import, declare, and use. Despite the simplicity of the code, there's a large stack of functionality happening beneath the API. The overlay class also parses Vovato metadata at runtime to gather and configure system drivers, IP, clocks, resets, and GPIO. Here the metadata collected is shown, enabling users to write new configurable software to interact with hardware contents. Bitstreams of course contain IP, and Pink's productivity gains don't end at downloading a bitstream. One of Pink's most popular IP classes is the Axie DMA. Here we highlight data movement using NumPy. NumPy is Python's de facto array object used across many application domains. Pink supports and leverages NumPy for all programmable logic data movement. And finally, for custom IP, users can see all the open source code in Pink and derive their own IP classes. Here is an HLS IP class mockup, where the details of HLS mapping of ports and addresses can be masked away. From MathWorks to RTL to ML accelerators, we've seen the community build a variety of IP and integrate with Pink. One last note on Pink's APIs. Most of our base APIs have never changed, allowing Pink to work across years of Xilinx tools and across edge and cloud devices. Now let's take a look at Jupyter. In particular, we're gonna look at how its inclusion benefits our customers and developers. In Jupyter, code is executable. That means our users can interact with code on target versus the traditional compile and run iterations. In clean code, you always hope your code is self-documenting, but let's see how Jupyter allows code to move with results and documentation. Here, let's visualize the results of some code running on an RFSoC device. Results can be displayed in the Jupyter Notebook after the code has been executed. Python visualization and plotting libraries can be used to visualize your results and then get embedded in the live running notebook. But perhaps visualization isn't enough to explain the work. Here documentation in the form of markdown is embedded in the notebook with the code. Additional markdown can also be used further into the notebook to give context that the code is executed. Think of it as much nicer comments for your code. And finally, this all executes in a web browser. Results can be shared as HTML, a PDF, or even the notebook itself. And since Jupyter executes in the web interface, it can be remotely accessed by users on any device with the browser. There are no other host requirements. And Jupyter is also evolving. We adopted Jupyter Lab for our efforts when it first arrived in 2018. Multiple notebook windows, text editors with syntax highlighting, and image viewing are all possible. Finally, a JavaScript-based terminal emulator allows users to interact from a shell environment inside the Jupyter Lab IDE. All great productivity improvements for developing on a Xilinx platform. Let's close out this deep dive into Pink with a contribution of packaging of Xilinx designs to look like any other software. We call this software packaging of mixed hardware and software designs as hybrid libraries, allowing users to package up their software and hardware to look like any other software package. This style of packaging is in contrast to traditional software, where only software source and or binaries are included. With hybrid libraries, we contribute to the community a Python packaging technique to include hardware files, notebooks, and any metadata needed to use hardware designs within Python. This dive into Pink showed how we leveraged and extended open source concepts from Python and Jupyter to give a new productive experience to Xilinx users. Thanks, Graham. Hybrid libraries discussed in the last section provide flexibility through software programmability, although the hardware components are typically fixed. My name is Cahill McCabe, and I'd like to introduce composable overlays, which extend the capabilities of hybrid libraries. The first instance of this is the composable video overlay. A mini library of hardware functions is provided. The functions can be static and always part of the overlay or dynamic where functions are loaded and unloaded as required. This high level overview shows hardware components for inputs, outputs and video processing functions. And the user can select an input, an output and a set of these hardware functions and compose them to build a custom hardware design. Composing is done on the target, at runtime, and is instantaneous. A different set of components can be selected, and the system can be recomposed to create a new application. Switching to a demo running on the Crea Psalm KV260, with just a few lines of Python in a Jupyter Notebook, we can quickly compose a new design, in this case an edge detection application, using a video file as the source and output to a display. 
This application also takes advantage of widgets to build nice, simple dashboards in JupyterLab that we can use to control the design. Composable overlays offer developers unprecedented levels of flexibility, ease of use, and ease of reuse. Everything you've seen has been open sourced with out of the box support not only for the Crea SOM, but also for several other PINK enabled platforms. In summary, PINK has been very successful in targeting new users. By focusing on ease of use and ease of reuse, we have broken through many of the barriers to adoption. Our strategy of adopting leading FOSS stacks for data science has proven successful. Customers tell us that they really like getting open source solutions that they can immediately use. PINK has contributed significantly to the FOSS community by extending traditional productivity frameworks with support for adaptive computing. Projects like the Composable Overlay demonstrate how hardware can be abstracted so that it can be used by domain experts with no embedded programming or hardware design skills. At the same time, existing users have developed new frameworks based on PINK and have ported it to new boards, which demonstrates that they also benefit from the project. We have shown how PINK's use of and contributions to FOSS have been successful. PINK proves that FOSS works for exploring new ideas, for rapidly disseminating results, and for building global communities of enthusiastic users.